West Coast Energy, energy was, uh, was established in 1996 by a startup company by Jerry and Rogers, and is now one of the UK's leading independent wind energy developers. We've been involved in consenting over 650 megawatts of wind energy in the UK, and we've got offices in Edinburgh, Inverness, Canterbury, and Burnley, as well as more recently in Holland. But our head office is in Malden. It's a sign of our confidence in the future that we moved into bespoke uh, office complex, uh, recently built for us at the cost of £2 million pounds, only a year or so ago, and that's been one, one or has been shortlisted for quite a number of leading environmental awards. Close to focus uh, on West Coast Energy, but there are four elements to the group. West Coast Energy itself, which focuses on renewable energy development. Atmos Consulting, we're an environmental energy and planning consultancy. West Coast Network Services and our agricultural and engineering services for uh, the DNOs. And the Low Carbon Energy Company, which specializes in micro generation renewable solutions. There's 150, uh, more than 150 people working in the group now, but it's probably close to 200 now. Um, and I'm here to discuss West Coast Energy. We're at the new offices that we've fitted into and starting to fill up quite rapidly. West Coast Energy has some 70 staff from many disciplines. We've already heard them talk about the, the variety of people that work for, for companies. We've got engineers, we've got electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, geologists, CAD specialists, planners, surveyors, we've even got lawyers, all supported by our ministers and IT teams. It's an experienced team. We're specialising in the identification, the design, planning, and development of wind energy projects through conception, right through to construction and operation. And so far, so it's say it again, 650 megawatts is what we've uh, achieved so far. And that's about 6% of the UK onshore development. We've can experienced significant growth, uh, both from work and from employment over the last uh, 15 years. That's the direct impact we have. But when we have a project in consented, we enter into a new phase of development. Once consented, a typical wind farm will cost about 1.2 million pounds per month to construct. We've already heard that. And as a rule of thumb, 15 to 20% of that will be for spent in the UK. And that assumes that all turbine components are imported, which thanks to the military will no longer be the case. So based on that 650 megawatts of uh, generation, either consented, developed, or in, or in construction, we feel that we can reasonably claim to have been to have, have had to have had a hand in introducing over a hundred million pounds worth of work to UK firms over the last fifteen years. It's just a pity that most of this work is in England and Scotland and not Wales. That's not a policy decision by West Coast Energy, just an acceptance of the harsh reality. <coughs> We're committed to being in Wales. We're eager to invest in, to, to continue to invest in Wales. But energy policy in Wales has been a fire and forget policy. In 2005, TAN 8 was released with fanfare by the Welsh Government and then abandoned to fend for itself, with little evidence of any attempts by government to engage with communities, local decision makers, to explain their policies and actually gain the support of the electorate. If anything, Rather than being leaders, Welsh government seems bent on blindly following the vocal minority who shout loud. We get mixed messages from politicians which inhibit long-term investment decisions. Is, we are, is Wales really open to business? Is Welsh government really com committed to a low carbon economy? Or is it just paying up service? Welsh government will protest that they're committed, but the reality is there's little evidence of the conflict. Wales has some laudable and achievable targets and aspirations. It's just unfortunate that we see any little evidence of any sustained will to see these policies put into practice. Elsewhere in the UK, West Coast Energy are making investment decisions based on a typical uh, time scale of seven years, from first identifying the project through to commissioning. In Wales, it's anybody's guess. And until we can see any evidence of concrete and sustained change in approach to implementing their own policies from Welsh Government, I feel we'll continue to see Welsh companies having to write and rely on projects in England and Scotland for their sustained growth and possibly in their existence. 
So in order to see a firm and sustained foundation for Welsh businesses to operate in Wales, we'd suggest that the targets contained in Planning Policy Wales are adopted as firm and binding targets that will form material considerations when determining planning applications. Capacity targets for all renewables should be confirmed and adhered to. Targets should reflect the fact that the seven barrage is still only an aspiration and cannot guarantee contribute towards these targets within the plan. <coughs> Welsh Government should actively engage with all sectors of the community to educate and explain their own policies. I'd even include some of their own departments in that. I have to confess that there are times when we can be forgiven that, for thinking that in the absence of clear guidance from Government, some see their role as inhibitors rather than, than as enablers. Statutory and non-statutory consultations should be required to provide comprehensive, consistent, timely and constructive responses to consultations on planning applications for energy projects. But to do this, they will need to be adequately resourced. We welcome the First Minister's decision to take the mantle at ministerial level for delivering binding targets. But he should be reporting on progress made towards change. Uh, achieving these targets on a, an annual basis and where, or rather based when, as a shortfall, we should recommend a catch up measure. There should be a presumption in favour of community based schemes with installed capacity up to 25 megawatts outside the town of SSAs. Welsh Government should establish and then adhere to a firm policy in relation to the grid infrastructure that's required for the development of all low carbon energy technologies including offshore wind, onshore wind in Wales, and will be. This should be derived within a 12 month period and include consultations with key stakeholders <coughs> being imposed on us. The economic benefit that we've heard so much about that accrues from energy development should be a material uh, uh, consideration in the planning process. PV on roof space on commercial properties should be deemed consent. But most of all, we require certainty and tangible support, tangible support, not just words from the Welsh Government, to show that Wales is actually a part of business. We at West Coast Energy believe that we can look forward to continuing our contribution to the low carbon economy. And until such time as Government takes an active and sustained interest in delivering its own targets, instead of just talking about them, like many of the Welsh businesses, we will continue to operate in an environment where words speak louder than actions and make sure we've got plenty of work outside Wales. Make no mistake, Wales is a good place to operate from. But sometimes we ask ourselves whether it's a good place to even try and operate in. Thank you. <laughs>